to know if you Monday, Monday the 12th. Yeah, yeah, we are a finish that this weekend for sure. Uh huh. I sat my part already. Well, show up now. Oh, great James. Hey, oh, beyond. What are you doing this weekend? Have a beach house we could go up in. Maracas? Don't study that, don't study that. So, what about the project? We could do it up there. Beach, drinks, food, bikes, and I'm project.
you want to live? Answer my few questions before I burn you. What is protein mediated passive transport? Okay, okay. Well, protein mediated passive transport is a biological process where solutes needed by living cells metabolism are facilitated into and out of the permeable cell membrane by membrane proteins. Hmm. Impressive. Ah. So, there's a specific name given for these membrane proteins. What are they? Membrane proteins fall into two categories of transporters. They are carriers and channels. Hmm. You're taking me for a wise guy. Explain these proteins. Carriers are proteins that bind to substrates with high stereospecificity and they catalyze transport at rates lower than the limits of free diffusion. And what are channels? Channels, on the other hand, allow transportation to cell membranes at rates higher than that of carriers. You're getting the close and you're becoming brave, boy. But there must be something driving these transporters. Tell me them now. Oh. Cell membranes are permeable, and when ions of opposite charge, also called polar solutes, are segregated by this membrane, an electrical gradient, also called the membrane potential, is produced. This is measured in millivolts. Also, the membrane potential produces a force opposing the moment of ions. This would reduce the voltage. As a result, the direction in which a charged solute tends to move spontaneously across a membrane is dependent on both the chemical gradient and electrical gradient across the membrane. The overall process is called the electrochemical gradient. Mm. Seems like we have a chemist here. I must say. Then, let's see if you can explain the gist, jarring, how the solute cross the cell membrane if lipids are hydrophobic. Well, in order to cross the lipid barrier, a polar or charged solute must first give up its interactions with water molecules in its shell, after which it must diffuse. Removal of the hydration shell is highly endogonic, and the energy of activation for diffusion is very high. Consider yourself lucky, darling. Example of this is glute 1 glucose. 
The second link, there's a symport. It binds two dissimilar solids and transports it into the membrane. An example of this is glucose sol sodium. And thirdly, there's an antiport. It binds two dissimilar solutes and transports it at the same time in opposite directions. An example of this is adenine nucleotide translocase. Is that all from Axis? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, Axis, you're lucky. You have answered my questions. I will let you live for now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, cake. Ha 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 ha! 